Hello everyone, uh, I am Jasmine here and we are going to talk about perfumes, classification of perfumes and perfume ingredients which are listed as allergens in uh, EU regulations or European pharmacopoeia. So uh, moving forward with the presentation or the topic of the presentation today, firstly we'll uh, discover the table of content which uh, we are going to cover in this presentation, uh, which is the basic introduction about the perfume, the basic physiology of using perfume, but uh, what was the history of uh, perfume, uh, what are the notes that are included in perfume, uh, classification, composition and manufacturing processes of the perfume, uh, allergen ingredients listed uh, in EU, uh, what are the ingredients that are causing allergic reactions, uh, what is the physiology uh, behind using perfumes and what are the future prospects of perfume industries and uh, that's it so starting with the uh, introduction uh, what is perfume so perfume is a mixture of fragrant essential oil aromatic compounds fixative and solvents uh, which are um, utilized by humans or which, which is uh, applied on animals or uh, which are included in food objects or living space to make it uh, pleasant uh, for everyone. So, um, uh, what are their forms? They are usually uh, in liquid forms um, and give pleasant sense to uh, the person's body who is applying it. And uh, the word itself comes from a Latin word which is perfume, uh, which means through smoke. Why smoke? Uh, because it gives its smell through evaporation. Uh, so, uh, fragrance. Uh, fragrances or perfumes are some oldest cosmetic products. Um, they have been used by Egyptians uh, which at that time uh, were used uh, um, by using scented oils at least 5000 years ago and later it was followed, by, uh, followed in other traditions also such as Chinese, Hindus, Arabs, Greeks and Romans. And coming to basic physiology uh, of the perfumes, uh, what happens uh, uh, when whenever we inhale an odorant molecule of the perfume, it is not oh, it does not create a sensation of odor, but it creates an emotion also, uh, and uh, <coughs> emotion uh, which is related to the experience uh, which was associated with uh, with that time or with that uh, particular um, environment so uh, for example we can understand it as uh, whenever we focus on a bar or we try to remember our pleasant memories of childhood uh, eating ice cream uh, so the the uh, fragrance of that vanilla flavor comes uh, in our mind also so um, what perfumes does is they stimulate our hippocampus and causes secretion of growth hormones, sex hormones and neurotransmitters which gives us uh, a pleasant feeling. And another uh, reason uh, behind using the perfume is to increase attractiveness in the eyes of other people and uh, uh, that is the basic physiology uh, of the perfume. So uh, now talking about the history of perfumes, uh, history of perfumes include um, uh, that Egyptians were the first who used perfume for their personal enjoyment. But uh, production of perfume was reserved for the priest at that time and it was used for religious purposes. And uh, Greek, uh, Greeks were uh, using an extraordinary amount of perfume. Uh, for each and every part of body, they used to mm, use different type of fragrances and uh, for the hygiene purposes of the body also. Then comes the Arab. Uh, what they does is they fuse the art and the science and um, in that uh, two Arab chemists uh, naming Zabir ibn Hayyan and Al-Kindi established the perfume industry. And Romans uh, were also using perfume as a part of luxury and the oldest perfume was discovered uh, 4000 years ago. Uh, including the uh, including manufacturing um, plants also or manufacturing industrial scales also so this was the history of the perfumes and um, coming to hungry people 
they introduced their first modern perfume which was made by uh, scented oils which were blended with alcohol solution as it was command commanded by the uh, queen elizabeth of hungary and uh, france france is also considered as the birthplace of the modern perfumery and um, france provided uh, growth of uh, various aromatic plants for perfume industry and raw materials and even today uh, it is it is the center of the european perfume designs and trade also and england and germany also contributed in the modernization of perfume industries now coming to a very important part which is notes in the perfume so um, perfume is described in a musical metaphor uh, because it is having three notes or set of notes making the harmonious scent accords so these notes were created carefully with all the knowledge of the evaporation processes of the ingredient that are being utilized in the perfume so there are three uh, notes top note middle note and base note and each of the level has their its own purpose of uh, utilizing it or providing the pleasant smell so uh, this is a pictorial representation of the notes uh, where uh, we can represent the base note middle note and top note by the use of the pyramid uh, the pyramid base shows that base note is um, used in the larger quantity and it will take longer duration of time to get evaporated middle note takes a uh, lesser time uh, than the base note and it is used in a little less quantity as compared to the base note and is more volatile than the base note and uh, the top note is uh, um, used in a very uh, less amount and it gets evaporated as as we uh, use it on our body so uh, let's uh, further discuss about the notes of the perfume so what are the top notes uh, they are generally the lightest of the all notes that is why they are placed uh, on the top of the uh, pyramid so uh, they can be recognized immediately after application how because they get evaporated quickly top notes uh, generally consist of small light molecules which are highly volatile and get evaporated quickly and the common fragrances uh, that are included in top notes are citric fragrances such as lemon or orange zest or light fruit fragrances such as grapes berries and some herbs herbs are also included which are uh, examples would be celery sage and lavender coming to middle note so uh, the middle note uh, is also known as the heart note why because it makes the appearance of the top note and uh, it uh, uh, it hold uh, the the perfume for a particular hold the uh, perfume or fragrance of the top note for a particular period of time and not get let evaporated quickly so the middle note uh, is also known as heart note and it is the main body of the perfume because it act uh, what it does is uh, it does not let evaporated the top note um, smell quickly as well as it mask the unpleasant uh, uh, initial impressions which uh, which uh, comes from the base note and make it uh, more pleasant as the time passes and a common example would be uh, lemon nutmeg and uh, and uh, talking about uh, um, uh, base notes so uh, base notes or bottom or dry notes appear while the middle notes are fading and uh, base note and middle notes together are the main theme of the perfume they decided the theme of the perfume and a base note uh, what does is they bring depth and solidity to the perfume and uh, example of common fragrances which are included as base note would be sandalwood vanilla amber musk etc and here i have represented it uh in a pictorial manner moving forward with the classification of perfume they are divided into uh, majorly five uh, groups on the basis of the concentration of the fragrance utilized as well as the duration of their lasting uh, lasting of the fragrance so class 1 is uh, uh, named as perfume or you can say perfume where the aromatic compound is 20 to 30% and the duration of the lastage of the fragrance is 6 to 8 hours second category uh, talks uh, second category is named as you the perfume 
and here the aromatic compound percentage is 15 to 20 percent and the duration uh, is four to five hours and third category named as you the toilet uh, here um, Aromatic compound percentage is 5 to 15 percent and the duration of the um, fragrance lasts for 2 to 3 hours. Fourth category uh, is named as U de Cologne, uh, where the percentage aromatic compound is 2 to 4 percent and the duration would be 2 hours. And last category or last class is known as U Francy, uh, where the percentage aromatic compound is 1 to 3 percent and the duration includes two hours so um, another class uh, which uh, is there on the basis of the uh, material utilized is uh, includes uh, first one would be blight floral where uh, fragrance of one or other flowers or several flowers will be included and example uh, a marketed example for that would be the Estee Lauder's beautiful perfume second category would be the green perfume where the fragrance from the cut grass or the leaves are utilized and example would be Calvin Klein's eternity perfume and third is the uh, aquatic class where a clean uh, small reminiscent of ocean um, fragrances will be included and it includes example include uh, Debbie Drops cool water and then comes the citrus category where uh, freshening effects of citrus fruit were uh, developed and example would be Favorage Brut. Fifth category would be Fruity uh, where the aromas of the fruits other than citrus fruits were included as well and example would be um, Ginstead, uh, bot Botrits and um, sorry if i pronounced wrong and sixth category would be uh, gourmand where the scent of the edible desert uh, were included and uh, example includes uh, theories uh, mugglers angel perfume and uh, what are the basic aromatic sources uh, uh, which are utilized in making of the perfume so uh, there are three sources uh, first would be plant source where we will be, we will be utilizing the bark of the tree flowers of the tree blossoms fruits resins roots seeds wood etc animal sources will it would include uh, mush civet honeycomb etc and synthetic sources would, uh, will include calone or synthetic terpenes um, for the fragrance purposes and talking about the composition of the perfume so perfumes are mainly composed of three things essential oil fixatives and solvents so uh, essential oil are basically derived from the natural uh, natural aromatic plant extract or some synthetic aromatic chemicals as well and basic example would include limonene geraniol or citril then comes fixative where natural or synthetic synthetic substances are used to evaporate or to reduce the uh, evaporation of the uh, essential oils so here uh, the example would include uh, benzyl benzoate or benzyl alcohol and solvents so the liquid in which the perfume it is, is dissolved is usually 98% ethanol and 2% water and alcohol allows the fragrance to spread along the area where we apply the perfume and it does not permit any microbial growth in the perfume as well so that is the purpose of including ethanol and talking about the manufacturing processes there are four types uh, of manufacturing processes or four steps sorry actually uh, four steps of uh, manufacturing a perfume first would be collection a uh, second would be extraction third would be blending and fourth would be aging so uh, collection what we does do in collection uh, generally is before manufacturing is beginning uh, is beginning mm. What we'll do is uh, we'll collect all the suitable fragrances from uh, our farms or the areas uh, where they are being uh, grown and we'll bring it to the manufacturing center.
okay then comes the extraction process where what we do is oils are ext extracted uh, from the plants or the other um, parts of the plant uh, which are being utilized in the perfume um, <laughs> by uh, various processes what are those processes uh, we are going to discuss here uh, first would be steam distillation where steam will be passed through the plant material which is held in still uh, in, an, uh, in a flask or uh, round bottom flask or uh, any any flask and uh, essential oil would turn into gases and gases would be then passed through the column or the tubes and it will be cooled liquefied and collected and here we get our uh, perfume uh, or the oils uh, which we are trying to extract from the plant part or the synthetic material whatever you are extracting then comes another method which, come, which is solvent extraction method uh, and uh, here what we do is plant part or the flower part are dissolved in benzene and petrolatum. What they do is they retain the fragrances of the flower and then after what we do is we use alcohol to dissolve that fragrance and we heat to obtain it after the evaporation of the alcohol the third step would be the influence where uh, flowers are kept on a glass sheet and we grease it and they absorb the fragrance of the flower and then we extract that fragrance using alcohol uh, fourth is the expression where citrus fruits or plants were manually uh, mechanically pressed until all the alcohol all the um, uh, oils were excused out along with uh, the juices and third would be blending so uh, once the perfume oil are collected they are ready to be blended together according to the formula which was determined by the field of the master and the master of the field is known as those so uh, it's a very fascinating name as you can see and after the scent has been created it is mixed with alcohol and most perfumes are made of about 20 uh, 10 to 20% of the perfume oil which is dissolved in alcohol and 2% almost water or traces of water is utilized then fourth process is aging where the fine perfume um, uh, all the fine perfumes are often aged for several hours uh, several months or several years you can say for uh, to ensure that blending has been uh, uh, developed uh, blending is uh, done um, in a right manner so that the the desired scent uh, would be achieved and then coming to ingredients that are listed in elegance in U EUR uh, there are basically four categories uh, and number of fragrances are included there uh, which I'll be talking about so first category is established in humans where number of individual fragrances that are um, uh, listed as allergens would be 54 and uh, uh, out of that 28 are of natural extract some examples of that include citral geraniol turpentine oil etc and second category is established in animals uh, which includes 18 individual fragrances out of that one is an of natural and um, extract and example of this include isocyclo uh, citrol dibenzyl ether jasminum sambuc flower extract etc third category is likely where 26 individual fragrances are reported uh, and example of this would include methyl uh, sorry i'm so sorry ethyl vanilline uh, methyl cinnamate and phytol and the fourth category is uh, possible uh, where number of individual fragrances are 35 out of that uh, 13 are of natural extract and examples are listed here and uh, uh, some ingredients that are causing allergic reactions are uh, sandalwood as we all know, we, we use sandalwood very oftenly, but it acts as an allergen also. Uh, it is used for its fragrance, but it causes uh, a side effect, which is hypersensitivity. Uh, the second ingredient is lemonine, uh, which is used for its uh, stringent smell, but it irritates the skin. Uh, third is benzyl alcohol. It is used as fixative in the perfumes, but it irritates the skin and causes redness and pain to the area where we are applying. Fourth category is benzyl benzoate, uh, 
uh, here it is used as fixative or sweet or because of its sweet balsamic order it is utilized uh, but it causes skin irritation like blisters aging scaling redness etc acetone and ethyl acetate both are used as uh, solvents uh, what they does is uh, they causes um, dryness to the mouth or especially acetone causes dryness to the mouth and throat and ethyl acetate causes cracking uh, of the skin so talking about what are the psychology of using um, perfume so um, as we all know that our memories are associated or uh, very re relatable to the uh, to the environment and environment uh, we remember by its pleasant fragrance so um, we we get attached with that emotions um, uh, emotions where uh, the the feeling is pleasant or fragrant so that is the main physiology behind using uh, using um, uh, using of perfumes and what it does as we discussed in uh, earlier slides first or second slide that it stimulates our hippocampus and start the secretion of the growth hormone sex hormone or the neurotransmitters and we uh, use to increase the attractiveness in other persons eyes also uh, we um, we are perfume to express our individuality also and to to create a taste or a character and it becomes our habit and whenever it becomes our habit it feels incomplete uh, without using it so these are some psychologies of using perfume and uh, what would be the future perspective of using perfumes so perfumes today are um, being made in a very different uh, ways and they are being um, manufactured from a previous century as well and uh, they would be uh, but nowadays there are uh, many synthetic or chemical perfumes rather than the use of natural oil or they are less concentrated also um, and uh, they are becoming popular also but uh, combining all these factors that uh, cost is also decreased and uh, because of the cost decrease it will be encouraged and more widespread and frequently used uh, by the people people mm. but um, uh, for aroma therapies more research are being conducted uh, to synthesize human perfume and to create some body scents uh, which would produce or repel other humans or as well and uh, these are some effect of, uh, and we are trying to mimic the effect of the ferrohormones as well uh, which will stimulate the sexual aerosol receptor in the brain so that could be the future perspective so moving forward these are some references which i have utilized for these presentations you can refer to that and thank you so much for being so patient with me and listening this presentation thank you